One of the hardest things to nail when you're filmmaking on your own is framing and your blocking. If you're behind the camera hitting record, how can you make sure that you in front of the camera are perfectly in the frame and how you want the story to be told? Well, as you can see, I get that perfect every single time, nailed it. So now I'm gonna show you how to nail your framing when you're filming on your own. Now, when it comes to framing, I love to use my environment so I can see where I'm framing and how I'm framing for myself, my head, my height, all that kind of stuff. So if you look at the tree here, for example, I know that that's well in frame. So if my head is gonna be about that height, I know that I'll be in frame when I cross that tree. So for example, if I do this now, if I walk away, as I'm walking past this tree, I am about the height of this tree. So I know that when I go back past, I'll be in frame. And that way I'm not chopping off my head. I'm not losing any of my body. And that way I can get nice, good framing for my shot. And I use this environment technique for this shot in Survivor All Costs, one of my early short films. I wanted to make sure that door in the background was wide open so it felt a bit ominous, like something could burst through there, as well as having the light switch at the front of the frame to add depth. So using your environment is a really good technique for your framing and making sure that you're not cutting your head off in shots. Also here with a door frame, that's a good way to see it as well. As you can see from this, I have perfected the art of nailing focus on my own when I'm filming by myself. But here's a couple of tips to help you nail your focus on your own. Nailing focus when you're filmmaking on your own is one of the hardest things you can do. One of the ways I got around this was by using the autofocus. So put yourself in the middle of the frame, have the autofocus pretty much there. And when you walk away, you'll still be fairly clearly in focus. And when you come right up to the camera for a shallow depth of field, you're gonna be really in focus and it's gonna look really professional as if you've got someone else filming you. The way I did this was using Filmic Pro, getting that Filmic Pro reticule for the focus, which I highly recommend you buy this app, by the way. Very good professional smartphone filmmaking app. And then you're gonna move into that square. So you take up virtually the whole square, almost the whole way that you're walking in and out of shot. So even if you're further away, you're gonna be in focus. And then as you come closer, you get a nice shallow depth of field. And again, it's gonna look like someone else is filming you and adds a bit higher, higher end production value really to what you're filming. And it can give you some really, really nice shots as you can see here. Now I would avoid a lot of movement when you're using the autofocus. Like any kind of autofocus, it can struggle to pick you up how you want it to pick you up. And even just clenching my fist and opening my hand, the focus struggles a bit here. So I'd highly recommend using it when you're in the center of the frame and not using too much movement. Something else you can do is using yourself as in a shallow depth of field and locking that focus, walking away into a softer depth of field, into the background, a deep depth of field. And that way, when you're coming back to the camera as well, you're walking from a blurred background into focus. And it's a nice technique, which adds a little bit more interest for the viewer watching rather than just having a static kind of focus the whole way through a film. Now, as you can see, one of the hardest things you'll battle against when you're outside filming on your own is lighting. Lighting is such an important part of filmmaking. And when you're on your own, you can't exactly control the sun but you can control how you use the sun and the sunlight. So don't walk towards the sun. If you're gonna to walk towards the sun, you can have blown out highlights like your skin, light colored shirts, that kind of thing. It's gonna be very, very difficult to keep that under control. And because you haven't got a second person to hold a diffuser above you to soften that light, you really want to avoid those situations. One way to soften light when you're filming on your own is to have yourself under trees, places where there's shade, like in the distance behind me, that kind of place as well. Make sure that you use what's around you so that you can soften that light nicely. Also, if it's a cloudy day, that really, really helps. If you've got bright sunshine and blue skies, it can be very, very difficult, even if you're using a ND filter, even if it's a strong one. But if it's a cloudy day, that can really help you get that softer light. Or if you want to film in a golden hour as well, that's when you're in the sort of first hour or so of light in the daytime and the last hour or so of light in the evening, when you get that nice kind of warm color light and often you're able to film without too much worry about highlights. As you can see, don't film yourself towards the sunlight it can really, really harm your video and make your filmmaking look very amateur. If you want to know how to film indoors, I have a video for that right here, and that will teach you how to get really nice cinematic lighting on your own indoors with a diffusion filter. Sound check, sound check, this is a sound check, sound check, sound check. Now, one of the hardest things about smartphone filmmaking on your own is getting really good sound. So a few tips I would share with you are as follows. Make sure before you hit record on your phone or whatever you're filming on, that your sound is working. It sounds really obvious, but I have had a couple of takes in the past where I've got back in post-production and editing, and I found out that the sound isn't actually working or it's much lower than I wanted it to be. And it's really hard to bring it back up to a level where it sounds professional. So check your audio before you go. If you're using Filmic Pro, make sure that audio bar isn't so low that you can't hear the audio and make sure it's not so high that the audio gets blown out and really horrible to listen to. At the end of your takes, before you move to the next location, make sure that you check your recordings as well so that the audio is all right for those. You can record them at the time again if you need to do another take to so get a good sound, 
but if you get to the end of the day, it might be too late for you to go back and get those shots again with good sound. So check before a take and after a take so you get good audio. Also, if you don't have a Rode Wireless Go or a lavalier mic, maybe you just have the microphone that comes with your iPhone, you know, the one that's with the headset. It's okay, you can make a film without sound. You can do a silent film, or you can go to freesound.org, where you can get sounds and overlays and kind of atmosphere sounds, that kind of thing. Or you can record sounds from your phone wherever you go and add them on top of your film. On top of that as well, you can go to something like Epidemic Sound, which is what I use, where they have a series of sound effects, background sounds, uh, atmosphere sounds. So if you can't do sound live there because you don't have microphones or the equipment, that doesn't mean you can't have good sound still. Either do a silent film or look at websites where you can subscribe even just for a month so that you can make your film, put the sounds, music and everything you want into that and you can still get good sound. Just because you don't necessarily have microphones doesn't mean you don't have good sound. Now one of my favourite tips that I give to people when it comes to filmmaking on your own and especially with smartphone filmmaking is film in 4K. Now the reason being is that it gives you extra options in post-production. So if you're not happy with the framing because you've been filming on your own, which I have done in films and even in this video, there are plenty of shots that you'll see in this video that I have reframed using this 4K method in post-production. So if you're not happy with this, whilst I'm centralized in this shot, which I'm happy with, there's maybe a bit too much space around me for this. So I'm gonna adjust this and make sure that I'm nice and close up. So we're gonna go for a tighter close up here by zooming in, just adjust that shot a little bit to centralize me even more. But if you wanna go for an extreme close up, you can do that as well and zoom right into the eyes and create a completely different shot from the one shot that you filmed in real life. So you can take one shot that's perhaps a mid or something like that and create about two or three different shots just from that one shot that you got. Is that enough shots for you? I think it is. But yes, you can tighten up here. Depending on lighting, this may work a little bit less. So on my nose here, you can see a bit of noise, but generally this will work really, really well. And you can see the eyes pretty clearly here and it makes a much more interesting shot in an extreme close-up. For this one as well, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'll do if it's a bit further away, and you can do exactly the same technique, bring the character further in, and the audience will never know that this is a shot that went wrong. It just looks like a shot that you framed really, really well from the off. And we all know that accidents can happen. For example, maybe if you're filming your own, your tripod slides down a little bit, and you didn't realize at the time, and you want to go a little bit mad. Now, if you're watching this video, the chances are you have a low to no budget and you don't have someone who's able to help you make your films. So one way you can get around that and make it feel like you've got a much bigger production value to your film is to start playing around with your foregrounds and your shallow depths of fields. So having a shot where someone perhaps is looking over a fence where it looks a bit suspicious, you don't quite know what they're doing, adding some kind of depth and shallow depth of field to that shot really will then up the interesting feel to this and really bring the audience into that world a lot more and make it look like you've got a much higher production value than you have and people will also forget that you're filming this on your own because it just looks a little bit more classy than a clumsy shot like this. One thing that I really want people to take away from this video is that you can still have great camera movement and don't feel limited by the fact that you're on your own. You can do a nice pan across to show you a landscape or an environment, have yourself walk straight into the shot after you've finished that pan. You can do tilt ups to reveal something that's interesting or quirky like this. You can also reveal buildings in a way that looks really beautiful or maybe a bit more haunting. You can drop down from the sky, create transitions where you look up to the sky and come back down from the sky if it's blue into different places. A worm's eye view is a really good one to use as well. I love doing that. And also you can play with the perspective of objects like this log making it look bigger than it actually was. Also with Filmit Pro, you can do automatic focus pulls or rack focus, which is one of my favorite things to do. I've got a video on that as well, which I'll put on the screen now for you. And you can play with frame within the frames. Make sure that also that your shots are telling the story. So what's in the background, how does that relate to the film as well? And instead of just showing railway tracks, have it actually come out from a frame within a frame through a fence or something like that to create something much more cinematic and much more professional looking. Also, you can get really creative with where you put the camera. So for example, I put this in a fridge for a short film, just put on a LED light so that I was lit up when I opened the fridge and make sure that light matches the fridge so it looks realistic too. And you can use lights from around the house as long as the light looks realistic to where you're putting it. And then you can put something heavy in front of the phone if you haven't got a stand. And then, because at this point I didn't have anything to put my phone on. And I just used that to prop the phone up, make sure it was angled in the way that was going to work. And I use it as well for survival costs, putting into a side drawer as well, which worked really nicely. You can also use different lenses to create different looks. So if you've got a couple of different lenses, like a telephoto lens, you can get some nice shots to make something stand out. Really something unique and different or something that shows a bit of a clue, maybe if it's a mystery kind of film. And you've got a wide angle lens. So you can go from a nice shot that looks wide and it's got a lot of the environment, something that's got a heck of a lot more environment and makes the place feel more vast and interesting. 
You've also got the anamorphic lens. This one is the Moondog Labs anamorphic lens. So if you go into hardware, tap on 1.33 times anamorphic adapter. You've then got a really nice shot. And I just love that anamorphic look, to be honest. It does make it feel a bit more higher production. I don't care what anyone says. That's my opinion, at least anyway. And you can then do nice pans and all sorts of movement as well. And just make your film look a lot more upmarket. Now, when it comes to shots, don't just show something that looks a bit boring and uninteresting. So for this shot, for example, I could have someone just walking down that path and have nothing blocking the camera or telling something that's in shallow depth of field. But when you move the camera into a different position, all of a sudden that shot will feel completely different. So really think outside the box of your shots and think about what's unusual. Don't necessarily go for the first shot that comes to mind. Find something that's interesting and can add something to your story and the production value too. Pro tip, use people who are in parks as your extras. They won't know but it'll add to your film. Also, if you have a neighborhood cat, you can use them in your film as well to add a bit of production value. This is passion. Do you wanna wake up, passion, not look like you're sad? It's pretty exciting to be in this video, isn't it? Isn't it? Forget it.